Nate, Richard, congratulations. You guys have made it into the final round of this competition, which means that you're both one step closer to the title of Forged and Fire champion and a check for $10,000. Now we're sending you back to your home forges to recreate an iconic weapon from history. That weapon is the Kapinga. <laughs> Good luck. We'll see you in five days. I'm so excited to be representing Texas. That really is big for me. I want to win this for all of us. I stole modeling clay from my kids. They're not going to be happy. So this crazy Kapinga, nobody makes these. I think that my metallurgy background is going to give me an advantage over Nate. I think I'm going to end up getting a lot of length on the handle, bending this guy, bend this guy. There's a Kapinga in this big old hunk of stuff. Anytime you take steel and you bend it, with every action, there's a reaction. It's compressing on one side, elongating another. A lot of stress going into those joints. Nate is an awesome smith, and I know he's bringing his A game as well. Starting to take a little bit more shape. I have the shape to the Kapinga complete. I have to do a lot of grinding today. I'm trying to get in here and in here. I can't get all the angles that I want to because of the shape of the weapon. So I am taking creative liberties in how to grind this Kapinga. Whoa. It's just a tricky blade to grind. Totally different from the ordinary blades. You gotta be careful. Now I have some very fine artwork to do. Understanding exactly the texture that I want here is going to determine what kind of chisel I need to use. Just heat this up a little bit. The technique I'm going to be using for engraving is based on Japanese metalwork, and they use pine tar to secure their metal to a work table. I don't have any pine resin, so I used hot glue. This cannot be done while tense. The patterns I've added to this really give this piece more historical accuracy. These are more than just simple throwing knives. As Andes believed that these are symbols of warriorship, and they were highly revered. So I'm very proud that the designs hand chiseled. I think it looks spectacular. Perfect. I'm really happy where I'm at at this point. So it's time to heat treat. It may snap right here. There's so many different areas. This is a long blade. I'm thinking, how am I going to heat treat it? I have to heat the whole blade evenly and then quench. This is for $10,000. This has got to be right. Doesn't fit. If I can't get that blade heated, it's not a blade. If I stuck it in there like that and took the torch and heated that guy at the same time, pull it off, boom, I can do that. So I have the bigger blade in the forge. I'm heating up the part that's sticking out. This is not ideal heat treating. This is not how I do things. I don't know if this has ever even been done. If this works, it is going to be a miracle. Come on. I've got no other options. It's got to be done today. Hard. Hard. All of it got hard. I'm very happy. I was wound up tight about this. I am feeling a little urgency because I have three things to get done today. Heat treat the blade, put on a handle, and then sharpen it. The heat treat goes swimmingly. There's no warping. So the handle, I'm going to try out something I've never done before. I'm going to use a braid. I chose goatskin because it's excellent for braiding. It's very strong and very thin. Got to love leather. The last thing I'm adding to the handle is a wax called saddle soap. Goop it on and wipe off the excess. This is just to protect the leather and to give it a little bit more of a comfortable grip. There's just so much energy in the air that it actually started to hail. I think this is a good omen. I'm bringing something deadly into this world. This is the birth of something great. Bladesmiths, the Kapinga. It's made to be a throwing weapon. With so much blade, I wonder what kind of lethal damage it's going to do. Nate, you're up first. You ready? I'm ready. Wow. <laughs> All right, Nate. It feels good when you throw it. 
The penetration of your blade is so deep that will hit vital organs. This is definitely the back scratcher of death. <laughs> this weapon will kill. <laughs> Richard, you're next. You ready? Let's do it. Awesome. Well, Richard, when you throw it, it's got good balance for forward momentum, enough to penetrate into the carcass. Overall, your weapon will kill. Good job. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, to test the strength and durability of your Kapingas, I'll be throwing them into our log wall three times each weapon. Nate, you're up first. So, Nate, your handle is really beautifully done, but it's sticky. Yeah. That first throw, instead of releasing here, I released all the way down here, and it just was stuck in my hand. Having said that, it buried itself in that wood quite beautifully. OK. Nicely done. Thank you. All right, Richard. Let's do it. getting scared at this point. I'm hoping it's just a timing issue, figuring out that throw, and not an issue with the design. That can be big problems. Wow. All right, so let's talk about the design of your weapon. The way your blades are spread out seems a bit wide. If this blade were here, it would be traveling forward as opposed to down. But I think for me, the biggest issue is the longer handle is really increasing my rotation. I do like the shape of your handle. Uh, it comes out of the hand quite nicely, and everything's still right and tight. Well done. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, to test the sharpness of your blades, I'll be throwing them into our canvas sandbag wall here two times. Nate, once again, you're up first. You ready? I'm ready. So, Nate, punctures the bag like it's not there. <laughs> I like the positioning of your blades. But what's nice is this short handle. You, you're going to not have as much to catch coming over the top on the rotation. That's a big plus in a thrown weapon. Well done. It's a good thrower. Thank you. Richard, you ready? Yes, sir. Uh, again, the positioning of your blades sets it up for a different rotation, and I need to adjust to throw this weapon. But it's definitely a sharp weapon. Uh, went right through the bag. It's a good job. Thank you. Nate, Richard, through three grueling rounds of competition, you've worked your britches off to be standing right here in this moment. And for that, we respect you as craftsmen. However, in this arena of competition, there can only be one Forged and Fire champion, Nate. Congratulations, you are the Forged and Fire champion. Richard, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. Richard, you brought us a deadly weapon that was strong and sharp, but with that long handle and the arrangement of your blades, it was just harder to control. I understand. Richard, please surrender your weapon. Richard, thank, thank you. you. The judges made the right choice. I would have made the same choice myself. I have absolutely zero regrets. This was a fantastic experience. The judges are fantastic. Good job, buddy. You know, David, he must be a, a brother from another mother. I've got a few fashion tips that I'm going to share with him later on before I leave. I'm ready to get back to Texas. 
Nate, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. All right, how you feeling right now? I'm feeling great, thank you. <laughs> Please present your Kapinga to the judges. I can't believe it. Being a full-time bladesmith is my dream. That future looks a little more bright, and that feels, wow, 